Hello, and thank you for tuning in again live today. It is Monday, March 18th. It is noon, and you are currently watching the Skill Building Monday Drawing Group here live on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. My name is Jason Leeser. I'll be your host for today. And if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments or in the chats, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. And welcome to Guy Aitchison's Reinventing the Tattoo Community where tattooers, apprentices, collectors, and the curious are encouraged to join in these live streams, real world events, to share and inspire and ultimately create better art and tattoos together. We beam out nearly every day and with your help have evolved into a quality network of amazing live and on-demand tattoo and art shows that have all been receiving rave reviews. You can find Reinventing the Tattoo in both of the app stores, the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store, as well as our Reinventing the Tattoo YouTube channel, our Reinventing the Tattoo Roku channel, which has 12 to 15 different episodes going at any given time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as well as all of the major podcast directories such as Apple and Spotify. Or you can do what most people do and just pull up your web browser and do a quick search for Reinventing the Tattoo and it'll all pop right up, except for the book, which is still currently out of print. Um, still trying to get my hands on a copy, so please let me know if you come across one. But no matter where you are watching live or on demand, you can always get the latest and greatest, most up-to-date information, all available at www.reinventingthetattoo.com. At reinventingthetattoo.com, uh, which you do not have to subscribe to right away, you do have one of three options that you can pick to try it out. The first option is a sample webinar from the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon. The second option is to get some free advice from Guy Aitchison about your unique goals. And the final option is to take a comprehensive tattoo history course from Jay Brown for fellow tattoo history nerds such as myself. Highly recommend it. You cannot go wrong with the tattoo history course. It's absolutely fascinating and covers a very wide range of things. At reinventingthetattoo.com, you can also find a full event schedule with weekly and special event live stream details. For example, if you wanted to hop in on today's show, you could go to reinventingthetattoo.com, click on the calendar, and boom, right there are all of the links that you will need to access any of our live streams with a couple of exceptions here and there. As well, at reinventingthetattoo.com, you have access to our Reinventing 24-7 channel, which is a lot like our Roku channel. It's got 13 different episodes playing at any given time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And you also have access to professional development courses and on-demand video seminars from over 20 world-class tattoo artists such as Bob Tyrell, BJ Betts, Andre Malcolm, and many, many others. So if you're looking to go through and maybe pick up a new seminar, try to increase your skill set a little bit, take a look at reinventingthetattoo.com. Even if you don't get the subscription, you still have access to go through and purchase on-demand video seminars. Once again, if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments and in the chats, and please tag a friend who loves tattoos. Maybe it's someone that wants to get their first tattoo, someone that wants to become a tattoo artist. Maybe it's someone that just likes fine art. Um, tag everyone you know, please. Help us get the word out. We have a number of weekly staple shows we always encourage people to tune into. Starting off on Mondays at 9 a.m. with Drawing for Tattooers with James Wisdom where we get to go through and discuss basic drawing techniques and strategies that help us get back to our roots of being a fine artist in this tattoo age. Um, core drawing skills are absolutely important. You can ask anyone that's been in this industry for 20 years or more, and it all comes down to your drawing skills and abilities. And that is 9 a.m. on Mondays, drawing four tattooers with James Wisdom. Following that, you have this show, which is at 12 p.m., the Skill Building Monday Drawing Group with me, Jason Leeser, where we cover a host of different topics, uh, ranging from painting techniques to convention uh, booking techniques and tips and tricks for traveling and a whole lot more. We even cover some Procreate uh, digital art tips and tricks. 
So if you're ever looking for anything of that nature, by all means, please but feel free to jump in. Capping off Mondays at 9 p.m., we have a subscribers exclusive drawing group with Sandy McAndrew from the Reinventing the Tattoo Network, where we get to go through and every week we cover a different section in the Reinventing the Tattoo canon. However, you do need to have a subscription to either the Reinventing the Tattoo Evolution or the Reinventing the Tattoo Canon course in order to join these live Monday night drawing groups. I can tell you from firsthand experience, having done these Monday night groups for over two years, there is a marked difference in the work that you saw from me before I started doing it and the work that I'm doing now. Um, it really does help drill in and nail in those core fundamentals of what creates these dynamic images that we see every day. I can't recommend it enough. Those Monday night drawing groups worth the, worth the cost hands down outside of everything else. 100% you cannot go wrong. Following that, on Tuesdays at 11 a.m., we have the Tattoo Weekly Show with Gabe Ripley, Lauren Gregory, and Fawn Baker, uh, where we get to go through and stay current on all of the latest and greatest tattoo news out there. For example, new laws being passed, new legislation or restrictions, travel requirements, um, anything that might impact this industry as a whole, if you want to stay up to date on the cutting edge of tattoo news, take a look at the Tattoo Weekly. That is 11 a.m. on Tuesdays. Following that, on Wednesdays at noon, we have the Tattoo Now Show with Gabe Ripley, where we get to do a deeper dive into the business aspect behind tattooing, whether it's applying for travel visas to work in other countries, whether that's working on your marketing strategies or your advertising strategies. Maybe you want to find a better way to go through and uh, work on client communication. All of that and a lot more is discussed. And that is the Tattoo Weekly with Gabe Ripley, or sorry, that is the Tattoo, no, Tattoo Now show with Gabe Ripley on Wednesdays at noon. Following that, on Thursdays at 6 p.m., we have the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast with Fawn Baker. Um, a great place to go through and share stories and discuss topics about collecting tattoos, our experiences in going through and traveling for tattoos, uh, what to look for in tattoo artists, and a whole lot more. And that's Thursdays, 6 p.m., the Tattoo Collecting 101 podcast. We also have a number of special events coming up, um, live events. Starting off with this coming weekend, I will be live March 22nd through 24th at the Skin Industry Tattoo Expo in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Um, it's a great show. It's a lot smaller, very high caliber artists. Um, it's not like a lot of these bigger, massive shows that you go to where you kind of get lost in the crowd and it's maybe you're having problems finding a booth or an artist. Um, it's very small and very personal. Uh, you know, a lot of us will sit down and we'll be more than happy to chat with you about anything, especially if you're getting tattooed. But it's a great show with really high caliber artists that's very small in volume just because they want to maintain that personal nature to it. So take a look. That is the Skin Industry Tattoo Expo in Allentown, Pennsylvania, this weekend, March 22nd through 24th. Following that, in May, May 17th through 19th, Reinventing the Tattoo will be live from Columbus, Ohio at the Hell City Tattoo Convention, and you would not believe the lineup of artists working at Hell City this year. We have special ar guest artists working at Hell City that include, but are not limited to, Paul Booth, Derb Morrison, Joe Capo Bianco, Jimmy Litwalk, Nico Perez, Ty McEwen, James Vaughn, Jesse Levitt, Ron Earhart, Marshall Bennett, and of course, yours truly will be there along with my very good friend, Seth Mushrush. Um, and it is going to be an absolutely incredible tattoo convention. I cannot wait to be there. Um, if you are looking for one of the premier tattoo conventions in the country to go to, take a look at the Hell City Tattoo Convention. 
and that is May 17th through 19th. Following that, June 23rd through 25th, also out in Columbus, Ohio, at the Red Tree Gallery, Reinventing the Tattoo will be live once again, and that will be co-hosted by Rember and Rember Studios. Um, it is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be three days worth of seminars. And I cannot stress enough that if you wanted to go and take some special seminars, really trying to hone your, some of your skills, take a look at the Reinventing the Tattoo live event at the Red Tree Gallery, June 23rd through 25th. We'd like to go through and take a minute to thank some of our sponsors and some of the people that make these shows happen. Starting off with worldtattooevents.com, the largest, most comprehensive resource for tattoo events worldwide. They are constantly keeping everything updated and uh, up to date. Uh, as we know, living in this post-pandemic era, there are still certain tattoo events and conventions that are getting rescheduled. So if you want the latest, greatest, most up-to-date tattoo event information coming to a city or town near you, or maybe it's when you plan on visiting, that's how I usually book my vacations, take a look at worldtattooevents.com. We'd also like to thank tattoonow.com, technology for tattooers, the leading edge in professional development, management, and digital tools for tattoo artists of all levels. They are 100% competitive with any type of CRM, mailing list, and scheduling software out there. So if you're looking for the digital tools to really go through and help you to get more clients to come through the door, to get the kind of tattoos that you really want to do, or maybe you're just trying to find a way to streamline your client booking process or be better at client communication, all of that and a lot more can be managed through Tattoo Now. Uh, they've been doing it for about 20 years. They are the apex of what you get in this industry for really streamlining everything to do with your tattoo business. We'd also like to go through and say a very personal and professional thank you and mention of Guy Aitchison. He is the founder and inspiration behind Reinventing the Tattoo. You can go to GuyAitchison.com where you can pick up a copy of his Biomech Encyclopedia, some of his tutorial DVDs, some of his, um, I believe he still has a couple of custom coil machines left for sale, as well as countless prints and fine art, uh, fine art prints, and occasionally the original oil painting, all for sale at GuyHitchison.com. Would also like to say a very personal uh, and professional thank you and shout out to Amy Nichols over at the Apprenticeship Diaries. It, the number one resource for information on what a tattoo apprenticeship is like, how to become a tattoo apprentice, and what to expect during a great tattoo apprenticeship. So if you're looking for more information on that, if you are a tattoo apprentice hopeful, or if you would like to eventually become a tattoo artist and would like to go about doing it the right way, um, take a look at the Apprenticeship Diaries with Amy Nichols. As always, we ask that if you like today's show, please go through and post a positive review on the channel. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button down at the bottom of the page to stay up to date with all future episodes and shows coming through on this channel. As well, if you would like to host a Reinventing the Tattoo event, become a sponsor of our community, or if you are looking for a fine art or a tattoo critique, you can always email management at reinventingthetattoo.com and we will get back to you just as soon as we can. And that does it for the intro for today. Um, and I did want to go through and just talk briefly and open today's show. Uh, with something I recently heard as I was listening to, um, forget if it was an audio book or a podcast, um, either way, it was someone that was much, much smarter than I am. And they said that the only difference between uh, being average and being great is discipline, is being self-disciplined and having that kind of mot internal motivation and drive. That is what they said really separates out, you know, just mediocrity from, you know, well above av average and great. 
I have a tendency to agree. Um, I think being disciplined with scheduling, being disciplined with your work ethic, being disciplined with putting in extra time and extra hours to really excel at this craft, it's key. Um, and you see that a lot. You know, I keep thinking back to the interview I recently did with Anthony Tex um, and asking him, you know, if there was one thing maybe he he could have done more of when he was just coming up, what would it have been? And his answer was, I wish I had just spent more time drawing, um, you know, sitting down in front of the TV and drawing a little bit. And, oh, I'm out, you know, relaxing at the park. I'm going to break out, you know, a sketch pad and draw a little bit. Um, putting in more time to perfect our skills and our craft is essential. And that doesn't just happen when we go to the studio. Um, it's something I was recently having a discussion with someone about, about how I keep studio time for applying tattoos. Um, because we were having a discussion about time management and how I'm typically up pretty late every night drawing, working on different things, working on concepts, working on um, going through, maybe it's man uh, budgeting and finance management. Maybe it's going through and just trying to streamline everything and consolidate all my messages. But I'm always up pretty late every night taking care of the, the necessary things that I can do at any time from anywhere so that I can maximize my time in the studio. And what that means is I'm showing up early at the studio and I'm keeping studio time for things that I can only do in the studio. For example, tattooing right? I can take care of my, my booking and my emails and all that stuff outside of the studio, right? I can do that stuff from almost anywhere. What I can't do from almost anywhere is tattoo. So I try to maximize that for the application of the craft. And I try to save other things, drawing, client messaging, etc. cetera. Um, I try to save that for every everything else, um, everywhere else, anytime, you know, I, I've been trying to get better about not doing that all the time and trying to designate certain days and times for that. I'm one of those people where I need to get back to it right away. Otherwise I'm going to forget about it. And long story short, uh, I'm trying to be better about that. And it's something I know I need to work on is my own time management. So I've really started to personally analyze and focus on what am I doing? Where am I doing it? What can I be doing in other spots? And how can I go through and maximize my efficiency in these different locations at these different times or on these different days? Um, and it's been a struggle, but it's starting to pay off. And I'm very happy about that. Um, it's one thing that I always try to stress to people is if you're trying to maximize your time, look at your environment, where you are, and then ask yourself, can I do this somewhere else? Okay, well, if I can do this somewhere else, then I can do that at a different time. But if I can't do this somewhere else, then that's what I know I need to do at that location. Um, and it takes a lot of self-discipline to do that. So stay disciplined, stay focused, things will work out. Um, moving right along, um, let's see, I do have a painting I'm going to be working on today in preparation for the Skin Industry Tattoo Expo in Allentown. Um, if you guys would like to hang out and, uh, you know, watch me paint and maybe talk about some tattoo convention tips and tricks, um, little travel tips and, you know, booking information and all that stuff. Uh, you're more than welcome to. Uh, also, please stay tuned. Next Monday, we have a special guest interview with Haley Adams uh, from Castro Tattoos out in San Francisco. Should be an absolutely epic uh, interview. I uh, just wanted to plug that now. More information on that to come. Um, I've gotten to meet Haley and talked to them quite a bit over the past couple of years since I took their seminar at Paradise Gathering. 
So it should be an absolutely phenomenal time. Make sure to stay tuned. That is going to be next Monday at 12 p.m. Uh, almost got my times mixed up again. Oh, well. Uh, looks like we've got quite a few people watching from Facebook. Please feel free to say a shout out. Um, you know, tell us where you're beaming in from uh, and what it is that brought you to today's show. I do have a little bit of setup to do as far as this painting I'm working on. Hopefully someone likes it and wants to buy it at the show. Um, but we will see. Uh, it's nothing super crazy. It's just like a little skull. Uh, should be pretty nice one. Pretty fun for me to work on. Just trying a couple of different techniques and tricks and uh, just trying to, you know, be a little bit better about certain things and work on certain things. So let's see what we can work on today. Um, I'm going to be using some uh, fluid acrylics. Oh. Oh. There we go. Back to that. There we go. Awesome. I'm going to be working with uh, some fluid acrylics. I've already laid in a lot of my darker tones and um, right now I'm just kind of going through and layering over top of those dark tones with some, uh, some like washed out white uh, as well as a little bit of black just to go through and create a nice smooth gradient in a lot of places. I'm a very big fan of smooth gradients because I know they are very difficult to achieve. Um, especially if you're working with something that dries pretty quickly. Uh, it's not always the easiest thing to do. So, um, yeah. So it's something that I always personally try to work on and be better at. Now, I do not have a mixing palette available. So I am going to just use my glass palette for oils because I really don't have anything else available. Um, I'm trying out a new black, by the way. It's from Golden. It's called Bone Black. Um, and it seems pretty matte. Um, I don't know. It's different. I think it has almost a, a much cooler tone to it as opposed to uh, carbon black, which has, in my opinion, a little bit of a warmer tone. Um, but, you know, it's depending on the look you're going for, maybe you want a warmer tone. You never know. Everyone likes different things. Um, but this will be for sale. Um, I also have a couple of other original paintings I will be uh, putting up for sale at the Skin Industry Expo this coming weekend. So if you were looking to purchase an original painting, by all means, stop on by. Let's see. That should have some nice... Uh, You know, I'm just kind of going through and layering in some of these whiter, these more white areas. Um, this is on a canvas panel that I covered with a secret sauce, a special formula uh, to go through and make it super absorbent. Um, and I really like the texture it created. I really like the way that even though I am using a lot of water and heavy washes, it's soaking right into the panel. So that allows me to get some of these nice, smooth, almost aqueous gradients. Um, you know, if anyone out there has ever worked with like watercolor or ink wash um, and you prefer working in that manner, this will allow you to work in a very similar manner. Um, but since it's on a canvas panel, you never have to worry about anything warping. You never have to worry because we all know if we use a heavy wash on paper, it's you're going to get a little bit of the bacon paper, as I like to call it, where it kind of looks like it's warped and curled and 
Um, your paper's not going to lay flat anymore. And yes, there are ways to counteract that. And yeah, you can always go through and use a heavier weight paper, um, you know, maybe 300 pound or something like that. But that stuff's crazy expensive. This is a homemade concoction made with everyday stuff that works like a dream come true. So it's a way to prevent any kind of warping or, um, or I mean, for lack of a better term, uh, baconation. Yes, I just now created that word. Um, and that is when you use too much water on a piece of paper and it starts to curl and become very uh, unstable. And the edges, if you look at it on the edge, kind of looks like a piece of bacon that's kind of wavy. So. And like I mentioned before, I'm just kind of going through and layering in some of these lighter values, going right over top some of the right over top of some of these uh, midtones that I've already painted in. The reason why is because I'm just layering it up almost like it's oil paint. And it's not that I'm attempting to change the value too much because I know that once this um, washed out white dries, it will make it a little bit of a lighter value, but it's not going to change it too, too much, but it will smooth out a lot of things. Um, and that is something that I did really want to achieve um, is some of these, you know, smoother kind of gradients and just a little bit of a lighter tone. So I'm kind of pulling back that, pulling that back out into the foreground to try to really maximize my depth that I can create. And this is just thinned out white. Um, I did add some water to it. Just because I don't want it to be super opaque. Um, whereas I actually have some, some different types of paint that I use for my final layer, which is usually super, super dark saturated blacks and then super bright, bright white highlights. And that is these guys. Turner Acryl Gouache. Uh, it, when it dries, it's permanent, but it works just like gouache. Um, gouache is a very opaque watercolor type of paint. Um, so it moves very freely and very openly with water alone. But it's also very, very opaque. Um, so for any of my final bright white highlights and my true deep solid blacks, I'm going to be using that. Um, and that's really going to kind of just put a finishing touch on everything until that point, until I get to that point, I'm just kind of layering a little bit here, a little bit there, um, you know, just really trying to go through and you know, build these layers like I would with an oil, uh, almost as if it was an oil painting. Um, but seeing as how I am constantly doing different things and I like to step away from things for a little bit and oil paints can be pretty expensive. Um, personally, I found this to be a great alternative to oil painting, even though it does dry pretty quickly and that's not always the best but sometimes there's not much we can do about that then again if you're trying to work at a faster pace which i always am um, it's always been a struggle for me so i'm constantly trying to find ways to increase my speed and efficiency when it comes down to creating art um you know then you know, it's uh, definitely something that you should look into. This is just a little bit of a, uh, a gray that I just mixed up using a bit of uh, that bone black. 
and a little bit of the same white fluid acrylic that I had mentioned before. Just to tone down a few spots. And then I need a little bit more with a little bit of a darker tone, just a touch. And then we'll throw a little bit of this here. That'll give us a little bit more of a prominent brow ridge or orbital ridge. And we'll just blend that down. Bring that up a little higher. Probably a little too dark with that, but we'll blend that out. Now this method and this technique is not the best for people that like to have a lot of that real heavy, thick paint texture on there. Um, I would not recommend using any of these materials for that because this is not necessarily going to give you the kind of look that you're attempting to achieve if you're using more of an impasto kind of, um, uh, if you're trying to achieve more of an impasto kind of look. This is definitely something that you would use to get a lot of very smooth, clean gradients, um, which, I mean, that's what I've always liked. So that's typically what I tend to move towards. I'm not sure if you'll still be able to see this, right? If I flip it, uh, let's move this. Let's see if I can adjust the camera angle because I'm going to be working towards the bottom of the brow. The glabellum is the actual technical term for the eyebrow ridge above the orbital sockets. Don't mind this white square over here. It's literally just paper towel. Now I did want to create, actually, let's get rid of that and we'll put that over there. I did want to go through and make the, um, the glabellum area a bit darker and really kind of create a much more prominent brow ridge. So once again, just going through with a little bit of that washed out bone black. Just creating some darker shadows. Now, I believe it was two weeks ago when I was painting on here. Um, I did mention that I typically don't um, use too much water when I paint. And the reason being is because I like to keep it a bit more realistic to actually tattooing. Um, if I'm trying to crank a piece out uh, for a show, an art show, a tattoo convention, or something like that, um, because I'm so used to working with aqueous media such as gouache, watercolor, uh, ink, 
um, like ink wash and all that stuff. For me, I can work very quickly if I use a lot of water. It just takes me a bit longer because I do layer quite a bit. So, well, it might take me about the same amount of time. Um, it just, I just know how it's going to work a little bit better. So I spend a little bit less time kind of stressing about, okay, is this going to be, you know, do I have to go back over this or blend that out a little bit more with a harder brush? Um, it just allows me to go through and kind of work in layers and build that layer rather quickly. Um, you know, especially if I'm trying to really go through and, um, you know, show some subtleties in certain things. Sometimes I'll actually work with a bit more water, even though it's not really like tattooing. Um, you know, but you do still get the same kind of an effect. It just, to me, blends out and allows you to get some of those uh, nice crispy gradients, those silky smooth blends. But if it was, if I was painting this more so just for personal pleasure, I'd probably go more opaque with it um, and work in more, much more of a tattoo fashion. Um, but once again, just me. Every now and then I like to switch gears and, you know, get back to my roots. And since working with aqueous media, when I say aqueous media, I mean anything that can be thinned out by water. Um, that's technically the definition of aqueous media. It is a water-based medium. Um, acrylics, liquid acrylics, fluid acrylics, um, ink wash, anything of that nature, that's all technically considered aqueous media. Uh, oils are not considered an aqueous media because you actually need paint thinner or um, Gamsol or something of, along those lines in order to thin it out. Aqueous comes from aqua. Um, aqua is water. So there's like a whole language thing there that I'm honestly not super qualified to comment on considering the fact that I can barely speak decent English, let alone uh, try to understand any kind of Latin root word. Um, and I'm more than happy to admit that, you know. I think I do all right. I can articulate pretty well, but I have not spent hardly any time studying languages. So that is not something that I feel super, super confident to comment on. See if I can move this back a little bit more so you guys can see what I'm doing. If you guys have any questions, by all means, please feel free to drop a comment in the chat. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions. As always, if um, anyone wants to talk about, you know, convention tips and tricks or anything like that, please let me know. I'll be happy to discuss that at length. I've worked plenty of shows to be able to comment on that. Um, there are, I, I would actually like to do a whole mini series dedicated to that, um, but that is still in the works. I'm still booking some artists for that and trying to figure out a timeline, but I would love to do a whole convention mini series with people that travel quite frequently to different places um, and just get some external input on that. So I'm currently working on getting that set up as well. I do have some tips and tricks that I've learned along the way that can be useful. So if you have questions about that, I will be happy to answer them. Speak now, forever hold your peace.
And then down here, I want to make these areas a bit darker to really kind of show where the light and shadow are falling. This would get a little bit darker. These would be darker. This bone black is nice because it is a bit more translucent than say a carbon black, which can be very, very opaque. So it does allow me to kind of thin it out and build it to get the right value a little bit easier. This is actually um, the second skull painting. I already finished the one that I was working on before um, and varnished that. So that is done uh, and ready to sell. So now it's just kind of finishing up this one. Um, I fully plan on photographing it and documenting it. If anyone would like prints of it, I'll be happy to make prints of it. Um, I did that with a more recent dragon painting that I completed. And um, even though I am willing to sell the original dragon painting, it did turn out pretty awesome and I'm gonna be hesitant to let it go. But I do have it set and ready to go for prints. Should anyone want one of those as well? Uh, feel free to keep up to date and check my social media link, which should be right there. I don't know how well you can see it, but I'll move this aside. My Instagram is at Philly Inc. By all means, please uh, feel free to, and you know what, we can actually move that down here. Um, so if anyone would like a print of anything, by all means, feel free to hit me up on social media and I will be happy to oblige. Thin this out a little bit more, maybe lift some of it off. It's one of the things I do really, really like about working with a water-based media. If it's still wet and your surface is wet, you can go through and actually take a brush that's a little bit more dry and kind of lift it off of the surface a little bit easier. That way you don't have to paint over top of it. Um, it's just one of the little tricks that I've picked up along the way. Sometimes it actually helps you to get just that perfect tone. And we'll make this part a little bit darker too, because that would be in shadow. I'm going for a top-down light source. Then we can go right over that little bit of white that I washed in, tone that down a little bit more. Make sure that that's kind of even on the other side. So we'll tone that down a little bit more as well. I think I'm on just a hair too dark here. Now, once this does dry and settle in, it is going to be a bit lighter. I'm okay with that. Now it might all get toned down. But while it is wet, I can still work with it pretty easily, which is nice. A little bit more black in this gray that I'm mixing up. A little bit more water, make it flow a little bit easier. Then we'll just smooth that out a little bit towards the edges. 
lift off a tiny bit of it. By lifting off the paint, you can actually go through and allow the paint to spread and flow a little bit easier, as well as giving it a little bit of extra room to kind of breathe and uh, travel through the water that you lay down. A little bit more dark here. Right there in the middle of the brow ridge. And you can kind of see how, and I'm not sure if it's coming across quite that well on the uh, screen, but you can kind of see how the paint disperses a little bit and kind of blends itself out a little bit more if you go back into a wet area with paint. Part of the reason why I also prefer to work with this medium, especially if I'm trying to create a couple of quick originals to sell at a show, is because um, I don't have to worry about anything taking super long to dry, especially if it's oil and you wanted to throw a varnish on it. That may take a couple of days to dry, and I've got the show leaving for it on Thursday, so I want to make sure everything is dry, set, and ready. Um, to go before I get to the show. And if this was oil, I would have to wait another week for that to dry at minimum. And then I would have to go through and um, apply the varnish and then that would take extra time. So this is a quick way to kind of pump out something that's a bit more like an oil painting um, without having to spend quite as much time on it. So just some uh, food for thought and just some, some input there. Plus, I can transport this once it's varnished. Varnish will only take a day or two to dry, um, even though I would prefer to give it more like a week. But, you know, it is what it is. But this also makes for a lot easier transportation, um, so I don't have to worry about wet paint getting anywhere. Do need a bit more dark over here. Yeah, I'm not typically a fan of selling original paintings, but I do like to hold on to them. Um, but you know, everything I make and everything I own is for sale. Some people might not like the price, but it doesn't mean it's not for sale. As a wise man once said, it's not that my work is too expensive, it's that people can't afford it. Yeah, same thing goes for tattoos. I'm not willing to undervalue myself in order to... Um, in order to meet, you know, people's specific budget, you know, I will help them with like methods of saving money so that they can afford to get tattooed by me. Um, not that I'm acting like a bank or anything or do a layaway or anything like that, but I'm not willing to go through and sacrifice my own personal value to um, just because someone's working with a smaller budget. That's just non-negotiable. My time is valuable, and I've invested a lot in being able to do the things that I do, and that requires act um, that requires uh, sufficient compensation. That's what I like to say. Cool, that's good. A 
Now I'll go through with a little bit of white acrylic, straight white, not diluted. Just trying to accent certain spots that I want to really be vibrant. We'll smooth this part out a little bit, but not by too much. There we go. This is just a little bit of washed out white, and then I'm gonna go into that with some bright white or pure white. Then we can kind of fade this off to this generalized area. And, you know, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that even if this is not completely done by the time I get to the show, while I'm waiting for uh, walk-ups, because I do have plenty of time on Saturdays for walk-ups at the Skin Industry Tattoo Convention on Saturday and Sunday. Friday is currently fully booked. Um, while I do have a bit of time for walk-ups on Saturday and Sunday, I can always kind of finish it up there if need be. My goal is to have it done. but. We'll see what happens. Yep. And a little bit more right along this ridge, trying to really accent the fact that this is a bit brighter. Same thing over there. Good. Now I am going to go through with a little bit of pure black. Hopefully this works out the way I think it will. Sorry if my uh, head is getting in the way. And we'll just create this guy a little bit better. And then maybe Good. And we can go through with a little bit of washed out black. Just a nice little thin crack. 
good. Same thing with this. Oh, crack. Just kind of cleaning up a couple of edges right now. And we've got a couple of people watching uh, from, let's see, we've got a few people on the tattoonews.com uh, Facebook page. Feel free to drop a comment and say hi. Tell us where you're from, where you're beaming in from. Um, we'll give you a little bit of a shout out there. This would be a bit darker. That's if you want me to mention where you're from. If you don't, then that's fine too. I'm not gonna pressure anyone into it. Just tiny little details it can make all the difference in the world. And if no one has any comments or questions, uh, we may end the show a little bit earlier today. just because I do have quite a few things to get done before the convention. That's going to get some matte black. I'm not super concerned about that. I'll clean up some of these other little cracks. Little bits of detail here and there. And we're going to work our way over here. Create a little bit more contrast. Good. It does look like I need just a touch more thinned out white or white wash, if you will, down here. 
just really kind of pump that contrast. Even though I'm not at the stage where I'm putting in my bright whites just yet. That part needs to be toned down a little bit. So we'll go through with a bit of thinned out black just like I would if I was doing the tattoo and I would just kind of brush right over top of this. I would tone that part down, same thing over here. Tone that down a little bit. That's gonna push that backwards. Now, because this is thinned out, I know it's going to have a bit of a lighter value as it dries. So it's not going to be, even though it may appear pretty dark as it's going on, um, I know a lot of it will lighten up a bit more. Yeah, there we go. So nice. Good. A little bit more thinned out black in a spot that I saw down here. This all gets pushed backwards a bit more. Same thing here, because I don't want that to be the same value as anything out here. want that to be a lot darker, even though I do still want it to be lighter than what's behind it. I want it to be darker than anything in the foreground. because this is a translucent black and not an opaque black. Even though, once again, it looks super, super dark, I know it's not going to dry quite as dark. It will give me a nice dark uh, wash. Nice dark tone though, which is good. It's exactly what I want. Because during the final layer, when I push, my solid blacks, my real deep dark blacks, and my real bright whites, that's when it's really going to come to life. And I'll give this another couple of minutes, see if anyone's got any comments or questions. If not, we'll, we will sign off for the day.
Let's turn down a bit. This whole area in here where my brush is now is going to have a real nice dark, dark matte black to really go through and really push that depth. And we'll just give this a little bit more of a washed out black. Once again, just building these layers up to get a nice tone. Thinning out the edges, blending those in. little bit more worst case scenario if i do ever end up going too dark with it and it heals darker than i think i can always hit it with a bit of a more opaque um gray tone and lighten that up a bit more because i am working with transparent tones translucent tones more so. So that will allow me to go through and kind of blend a little bit more. So using this black is more like I'm using a gray wash than it is using um, like a solid, solid black. And we'll go to our thinned out white. Kind of brush some of this in. A little bit more. I oftentimes like to paint upside down, paint my image upside down because it helps me focus more so on the actual shapes than it does on like getting consumed by detail or anything of that nature. So if you're looking for a way to really help you refocus on simplifying shapes and doing things of that nature, painting, working on a painting upside down helps you get away from that because you start to lose the idea of what it is that you're painting or drawing. And yes, the trick also does work for drawings as well. It just helps you move away from the concept of whatever it is that you're painting. This is a skull. I know it's a skull, but I'm trying not to get too locked into the fact that I know it's a skull. Um, I'm simply trying to just work on shapes and contours. I'm trying to get back to working a bit more expressively, if that makes sense. And just a bit more simplified as far as my shapes and values are concerned. And we're going to lift this off as best we can. And then I'll probably go back through and darken some of that up.
just kind of letting my brush kind of like skip around a little bit. And then same thing on the other side. It's that constant push versus pull. Maybe a little more dark over there, and then I'll call it a day. You know, right now when I'm adding these tones, I'm actually purely looking at um, how dark do I want this to be by comparison to the interior of the eye socket. That's why I'm choosing the tones that I'm choosing. I want it to be darker, but still not like super, super dark because that just wouldn't, that would blend in too much with um, the actual eye socket itself. But at the same time, I also don't wanna to go too light with it because then it's not gonna show the appropriate amount of shadow. Good, and we'll go with some pure white. Pure white. And then we flip it back around to check our tones. We can see that it's a little too light. So we'll probably hit that with a glaze of darker tone a little bit later. If I can't lift some of it off. Maybe I'll just do it now while I have everything out. That'll kind of round that out and push that back just a hair to blend that out a little bit more. Same thing with here. This is just thinned out bone black. This top part of the skull, I'm not really super concerned with. Um, I'm gonna keep that pretty vague just because I wanna make sure that all of my attention goes to where I have my detail. Just like I would if I was working on a tattoo. Maybe I'll flip this back around for a second. Um, just like I would if I was working on a tattoo, I'm going to keep all of my detail exactly where I want people to look, and that is in this generalized area, which means I'm going to keep the rest of it pretty vague, not a whole lot of detail at all, just kind of you know vague brush strokes, very abstract shapes, nothing super crazy, because I want people to look only where I want them to look and nowhere else. And that is something that you see if you look at Renaissance art, um, some of the old masters, is that they didn't cram a ton of detail into every little inch. 
they left a lot of things very, very vague and very kind of loose. And what that does is forces your eye to look at all of the detail stuff. That's human nature. It's ingrained in us. It's who we are as a species. You know, so I'm really not super, super concerned about this glabellum area. I did want to tone it down a little bit though, because I don't want too much bright white to be up at the top. I want to save that more for the nostril area and especially right in here. That's where my most of my bright whites are going to be. This top area is just going to blend in and fade in. There we go. Should do for now. I wonder if it's going to look, uh, this top corner is going to look. That is a bit lighter. So I'll probably go through towards the end up here at the corner. And blast this with some um, some pretty dark matte black to really allow the contrast to come forward. Same thing with all the way down here at the bottom. I'll probably hit this with a little bit of matte black just to really push that backwards a little bit more. A couple other spots as well. But that is for another time. And we will switch this back over here. Hope everyone enjoyed today's show. Um, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Once again, my name is Jason Leeser. If anyone ever has any issues or questions, if you have an idea for a show or a topic you would like me to cover moving forward, by all means, please feel free to drop me a direct message right here at Philly Inc. on Instagram. I'm also uh, at Philly Inc. on TikTok. Um, as well, you can also email me, jason at reinventingthetattoo.com. Once again, it has been an honor and a pleasure to do this for everyone. Thank you very much. Hope you guys got something out of today. Um, and I will see everyone again next Monday at noon for our live interview with Haley Adams from Castro Tattoos in San Francisco. Until then, take care. Keep your hands busy. Keep things moving. And I'll catch you guys next week.